Hey guys, how's it going? Go see Richard today, and today we are going to be unboxing and setting up this Ubiquiti Unify Switch 16. It has 150 watts of PoE, so that way we can make all those up there live and without PoE injectors. Because yeah, well, you'll, you'll see when you go into my closet there, it is completely covered with PoE injectors, and they suck. I'd rather just have something like this where it has PoE built in, so that way we can just plug all our PoE items into the switch. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and pull it out. Guess the best way to do this is just slip the cover off like so. Ooh, it actually balanced out, nice. And then from there, open the box of goodiness. Goodiness, that's gotta be a word, right? And then we've got some brackets, which I'll probably use inside the closet for mounting this thing. Oh my gosh, it's white. That's kind of dangerous. Good thing my hands are clean today. But the garage floor isn't. So as you can see, or maybe it's silver. It is silver. I'm just going crazy. It's not white. Either way, as you can see, we have this. We have our SP F1 and two ports if we're gonna be doing multiples so if you want to plug in multiple switches or other items from ubiquity you can just do this a little bit faster transfer for me though i think my router only will have it so i can plug in so be plugging my router into port 16 and then the rest of the items into here but yeah let's go ahead and uh, bring this into the closet so we can find a way to mount it if you're going to be just simply placing this on a shelf or a rack Go ahead and you can put these onto here. And what that'll allow is, or onto here, not onto the pad. And what that'll allow you to do is just set this up onto the shelf without it scraping against here. Gives it a little bit of space. Next, if you're not gonna do that way, you have these push plugs. If this is the kind of racking system that you're gonna use, so you can just push this into the groove and then you're able to screw these screws into the rack for us that's not going to work what i need are all these little ones and what i'm going to do is i'm not actually mounting it in a rack like this where it's going to be sitting like that what i'm going to be doing is mounting it like this on both sides because it's going to be mounted against a plastic wall panel which you'll see once i get in there so just make sure you know that so you know which way to mount it as you can see once we pop this open, there's four screw holes right here, which will line up here. Again, if you're gonna rack mount it so it slides in, then you'll put it this way, and then the screws will go like this into the rack. If you are going to be wall mounting it, then you would put it this way or that way, depending on which way you want it to mount against the wall. If you look at your instructions, you'll see what I mean. They plug it in somewhere above right here. They don't actually go to port 16 like some other switches they just show you plugging your internet in like in the fourth row so there we go i have it plugged in into the fourth row on this side don't know if it makes a difference but i'll let you know so that's plugged in now i've got all these other access points that i had with these injectors i want to keep these clustered onto the same area so if you know which ones are your injectored ones, you can go ahead and just plug them in, label them, do what you'd wish. But go ahead and if you had a switch in there before, start plugging these back in and fill up your switch. So just to go over again, what we did is cloud keys in number one. If you have a dream machine or whatever you're using, make sure that's in number one. And then from there, right here, I have the internet, which is on the last set of the silver before it starts on the next set you'll see there's four groups of four on the 16 port so that way it's pretty much in the center just like it says to do on the manual there and then from there i've got all the other ports plugged in for around the house these two that are up here the reason why i've kept them separate from the rest is they're just like lighting modules and stuff i wanted to keep those up higher i'm probably going to move this gray one to the other side of this power as you can see i it would be nicer if I routed it down and through here and up and over. You can do that if you want. I was just trying to do some, uh, wanted to keep it power managed and I didn't want it all tucked in behind here just in case I was gonna pinch it or anything. 
and that way it gave me a place to tuck in the ubiquity power cable since they put it on this side i guess i could have brought it around through here this right here by the way is my fiber line i'm obviously not going to cut that to spec because with fiber if it breaks i'd rather have more than less and it's one of the main lines coming to the house so running it again would be crazy i still need to zap strap this up and clean this up a little bit this i'm going to stick in right here that's for lighting once again and from here now that this is booted up it's actually quieted down a bit you might hear a little bit of another and that's just another hard drive that i have for a nas and stuff that's why you hear that other whine that's going on but from here, I'm going to open up the app here in a sec so I can show it to you. But I just wanted to show you how I plugged everything in, which was, again, internet up here. Probably, if I had to guess what port that is up here, that would be port 7 or 8. And then this one is plugged into, again, port 1. And then the rest is just plugged into whichever. It's been a good 30 seconds and that light's still glowing. That's kind of funny. Either ways, uh, these are the injectors I removed. So what you would do is where it was on the PoE side, you can now plug that in. For example, I have these wall ones, which I've popped through, plugged back into the wall outlet. And then there is my access points, which I moved to the ceiling. Or well, you can have them on the ceiling or the wall, depending on where. I found it easier because of the way this build is to put them on the walls and they work just fine. Plugged them in, deleted all these, and now I'm gonna fire up the app and show you that. I'm not gonna show you how to create the app. Just go and download the Ubiquity Unify app and then log into your account. And again, this video isn't gonna show that creation. If you're interested in that, I'm gonna post a video in the description and it'll walk you through setting up these guys and it'll walk you through setting up the uh, unify account with a cloud key all right so as you can see we got our unify network app just click on there you can see I, that's what i've called my house as soon as you do that you'll see it finds a new device go ahead and press setup it's going to connect to it there we go and from there we're just going to leave it as that and we're just gonna let that do its adoption, which should take about a minute and 30 seconds in the background. Right here is some more cool stuff that we'll be able to read out. And again, once this is all set up, you should be able to see the things that are not only on your Wi-Fi, but are direct connected. As you can see, I've got this thing getting ready now, but the reason why I see these little things with the arrow and the little chip, that means there's a firmware update. How you'll do that is you click on here, and then from here you'll go to settings and then go to update device upgrade to 6.0 upgrade boom it'll now start doing its stuff in the background just a warning while it's updating which can take oh quite a bit sometimes anywhere from five to ten minutes um, it'll be doing that in the background but you won't be able to access the internet through that access point until it finishes doing its updating and make sure you update that switch as well. When you update that switch, you might lose internet access to the whole system, but it's well worth it to keep your system up to date with the latest software. So I'm on the first tab. This shows me the network health, shows me a couple of the devices that are online, and that's just with the first device topology. This shows you that it's found your three access points. So we're doing good there. Right, if we go to the next one, we'll be able to see, again, some network health. It's going to show us more active clients and all that fun stuff. We can go to insights. It's going to show us our different networks, what's on the 2.4, what's on the 5. A lot of stuff is going to be on the 2.4 if you're using, like, Nest thermostats and, of course, like Sonos and all that. A lot of it just sticks on the 2.4 network for range reasons. And again, then you can also just check other health of your stuff. And it's saying, look at this, CPU load on everything is this, memory is 43%, blah, blah, blah. I'm not really gonna go too much into that because you don't really, a lot, 99% of people aren't gonna care about that. Well, one thing I promised you guys I was gonna quickly show you is something like this, for example. So if I click on different items, as you can see, let's pretend this is, I don't know, somebody that's on my network and I want to limit what they can do. I can press configure. And I can go on here, 
And let's say this person is just like, yeah, no, um, I need you off the network. And they're like, no, well, if you went to port profile, you could press disable. And if you press disable and then press back and save, that port would turn off and they would lose the uh, internet through that port. And so that's how you disable a port, just so you can see that and you can manage the devices that are on that port. You can also, by the way, so you know better what uh, devices are on there, you can click on it and you can rename these devices. So that way you are able to um, rename them and all that other fun jazz. Uh, let's show you another quick thing. Let's say if we went to settings, another thing you can do, Wi-Fi. Now let's say you created a gas network and that's what you have the kids on or you've got a network for yourself which is what you should do and then you have one for the kids. What you would do is, let's pretend this is the kids network. You can click here, um, you of course you can change the passwords, do everything, let's choose which um, access points the kids network actually goes on just in case you only want them on certain access points. And of course the biggest one, advanced configuration. Uh, you can go to right here. Wi-Fi scheduler. Add a Wi-Fi schedule. You, let's say you called it bedtime. You could set the start time, end time. So let's say 8 p.m. ends at 6.30 in the morning. And you can do that right here. And again, you can set that all the time, we'll say. And then, of course, press repeat. So it repeats every single week. So you, let's say we clicked here. You could say starts Monday and Sunday. Repeat it, though, every single week and you would set the times. Or if you want them to have the availability to be up later on weekends, you could set another schedule. You can set up multiple schedules. Anyways, that's a little bit on how to use some of the Ubiquiti stuff. I just threw that in at the end. It doesn't really have much to do with the port switch. The port switch just allows you a little bit more control for disabling ports and whatnot that are actually wired to a wired network system. All right. Well, thanks again for watching. I hope this helped you out. Press like if it helped you out. And of course, subscribe for more.